This is Easter Sunday. The epistles taken from one St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians. Brethren, purge, purge out the old leaven that you may be a new dough, uh, as you really are without leaven. For Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Therefore let us keep festival, not with the old leaven, nor with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The Holy Gospel. Taken from St. Mark chapter 16. At that time, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought, bought spices that they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had just risen. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll the stone back from the entrance of the tomb for us? And looking up, they saw that the stone had been rolled back, <clears throat> for it was very large. But on entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a white robe, and they were amazed. He said to them, Do not be terrified. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he goes before you into Galilee. There you shall see him as he told you. Thus are the words of the sacred scripture. <coughs> Happy Easter to all of you here in Chicago. I have to catch a plane very soon, so I have to make this very, very short. Well, I wish all of you a happy Easter. I had midnight mass in Kentucky at the seminary, and uh, I have mass tonight in Minnesota, Minneapolis. So this week you have every day uh, a whole mass. Every day this week is a first-class feast. Every day this week is it's like a one huge Easter day. And uh, the Easter season goes all the way till um, Trinity Sunday. So really unite with our Lord and adore this great reality of His resurrection. That the true God became a child for us. He lived the 30 years of the hidden life, the three years of the public life. He established seven sacraments. He established the Catholic Church. He established Peter as head of the church. He commanded Peter... Um, to guard the faith, to teach all nations. And notice the angels in this gospel say, go tell Peter. Peter is always given the chief preference because he's the chief. He is the vicar of Christ. And, and then how, how Christ established his holy Catholic church and everything that we believe <clears throat> was believed by the apostles. There's nothing new. This is the greatness of the Holy Catholic faith. It's always glorious. It's always the same. It's always victorious over the devil, the flesh, the world, as Christ was. Now, St. Mary Magdalene, she was... The three women went. The, the, the Roman guards, some say there were up to a hundred guards guarding the tomb, paid by the Jews. When they saw the rock roll out of the way, and they felt the tremendous earthquake, the description of Scripture of those who saw it said they, were, they fell as if dead. Put yourself on night duty in the cemetery, and a tomb comes to life. You might drop shocked also. And they were shocked. They were just frightened. And they ran off to the to get their pay from the Jews. Now, <coughs> Mary Magdalene, <coughs> she stayed looking for our Lord. All the fathers of the church praise her. They always praise her. They praise her for washing the feet of our Lord, for anointing her best, her best perfumes and an uh, ointment, the nard, on his feet. And that Mary Magdalene would be praised always for these actions. She's always at our Lord's feet, at the foot of the cross, washing his feet with tears. And 
And when, when our Lord was buried after his crucifixion, she was at his feet. And they rolled the, the, they got the big men to roll the huge rock to block the tomb. And the guards, the Roman guards, sealed it with the seal of Caesar. So St. Mary Magdalene, when after the resurrection morning, when Christ, this morning, the first resurrection, <coughs> the first Easter Sunday, the women went. And it was Mary Magdalene who stayed there, looking for our Lord, because she was so distraught. And St. Gregory praises her because she, although she offended God much, she sinned much, with all her heart she looked for our Lord, she chased after Him. And our Lord then, she, look, she looks firstly into the tomb. And she sees two angels, one at the head of Christ and one at the feet. And she just, all she's thinking of is our Lord. And she said, tell me where you placed him. Tell me where you took the body. Where did they take the body? And remember, St. Mary Magdalene is fearless. She doesn't care. She's ready to die. She was at the foot of the cross, ready to die for him. With the Blessed Mother and St. John. So wherever they would have taken the body, is it in with the Jews? I'll go get it. Is it in, with Pontius Pilate? I'll go get it. But the angels are t t tell, asking her, why do you seek for the, for the living among the dead? And the angels, as they're talking to her, some of the fathers of the church say that the angels look above her, and with great reverence they bow down and maybe even fall to their knees, because Christ is behind her. She's talking to the angels. They're looking at something behind her. So she turns around, and she sees what she takes to be the gardener, because Christ is simply clothed, but it is his resurrected body. And she says to him, panicking in her mind, only thinking of our Lord, tell me, she thinks it's the cemetery caretaker. Tell me where you took the body. I will go get it. I'll pay anything for it. Tell me where you took the body. And, and Christ, who doesn't, she doesn't recognize yet, he just says to her, Maria, Maria. The way she al he always would address her, in, a, in a, the way a good shepherd would towards a soul that had been snatched from the jaws of hell and the claws of the, of the wolves. And at the voice of Christ, and hearing her name by his mouth, she, the lost sheep that had been saved, recognizes the voice of her shepherd. As Christ said, my sheep know me. They know my voice. And we know his voice through the catechism, through the traditional teaching of the church, through the sacred liturgy, and the holy sacrifice of the Mass, and all the sacraments and ceremonies that surround these great gifts from our Lord. We recognize the voice of the shepherds through the voice of his popes of tradition. And we don't recognize the voice of the impostors, the mercenaries, who speak a new doctrine, who speak a new theology, who speak a new mass. We don't care to hear them because they're the voice of the wolf. But St. Mary Magdalene, she knows the voice of the shepherd. And immediately her eyes are open. She sees it's our Lord. And where does she go? Right to his feet. <laughs> she wants to hug his feet and kiss his feet. Now listen to this, because this is often a question. Why does our Lord say to her, Noli me tangere, don't touch me yet, because I have not ascended to my Father. Yet, that same day when he appears to the apostles shortly after, in Jerusalem, he walks through the wall. Calvin denied this. Calvin denied that Christ walked through the wall. He said he came through the window or the door. The guy's an idiot and he's probably burning in hell. But John Calvin, the father of the Calvinists, he did that because he attacked the Holy Eucharist. Because the Holy Eucharist, you have the accidents and the substance of Christ's body, blood, soul, and divinity. So he wanted to deny the Holy Eucharist, so he carried it off to saying Christ didn't come through the but that's just stupidity. All the apostles saw him come through the door. 
they watched him come through the wall. And Christ, when he appears to them, he says, touch me. Touch my hands and my, my wounds. And he allows them to touch them, and they recover the Catholic faith. And he eats to show them he's not a ghost. That had to be powerful to be there that Sunday morning. But for us, it's he's coming here on the altar very soon, the same Christ. He's going to come here right on the altar very soon. You're going to receive him soon. You're going to hold his wounds. He's rather going to hold you. And so why is this? Why does he say to St. Mary Magdalene, no, may ta- don't touch me yet. And why just a few, uh, within an hour later or so, he says to the apostles, touch my, touch my wounds. Why? So there's several reasons given by various fathers of the church. I'm just going to give you probably the, the best one, and this is this. Christ forbade her and commanded that she not stay there, but rather announce his resurrection to the grieving apostles. The meaning, then, is, do not touch me. That is, do not delay any longer in thus touching me. Do not waste time kissing my feet. Because she'll stay there for hours weeping over his... And he, he just rose, he says, and he's worried about the apostles. They're so, they've lost the faith. They're so sad. They're depressed. So his message is, don't waste time here. You can touch me later, but go tell the apostles. This, thou shalt be permitted often to do so afterwards. I am not yet ascended. This is a Hebrew, Hebraism meaning, I am not yet ascending, or I will not ascend that quickly into heaven, but shall remain for another forty days on earth, and shall manifest myself to you to be seen and touched. Therefore, go, hurry to the other women who follow John and P- Peter, who are returning to Jerusalem to their houses, and go on immediately with them to my brethren, the apostles, who are sorrowful because of my death, and tell them that I have risen, and shall shortly ascend into heaven. But first I shall be seen and greeted by them. Thus you shall, thou shalt do away with their sorrow, and fill them with great joy. For Hebrew verbs often denote an action which is not beginning, but continuing and being completed, as I showed elsewhere. So, do not touch me means thou shalt not, that thou shalt have time yet to touch me later and to speak with me. For I am still on earth and have not yet ascended into heaven. Therefore do not delay, but go, so that, so that my apostles may share in the same joy that you have. And sure enough, later, the math, St. Matthew 28 says, But they came up and took hold of his feet and adored him. So later, St. Mary Magdalene could touch our Lord and and venerate his sacred feet with the wounds of the the nail in his resurrected feet. So so he sends St. Mary Magdalene to be the apostle of the resurrection to the apostles. And then Christ, on this day, he's going to appear five times in different times. And then uh, from now till the, the, his ascension into heaven, Christ will appear numerous times, even to 500 disciples at once. Now, in the southern France, in the church of St. Maximinus, there lies, there is kept the skull and some of the bones of St. Mary Magdalene, because she died in southern France. And on her skull, right where Christ touched her, that skin never corrupted. And that skin is still on her forehead where he touched her. So St. Mary Magdalene, she, she looked for our Lord, she sought for him, and she desired him. And her whole life will be always chasing after him, so to speak, growing all the time by love, by love of God. And St. Mary Magdalene, she persevered, looking for our Lord. St. Gregory the Great says, it is a virtue to persevere in doing good. It is a virtue persevering and doing good. 
And we have to persevere in preserving the faith. We have to persevere in doing good to adore the true God, to keep the Holy Catholic faith when the whole world around us is, is collapsing to pieces. Morally, politically, in every way, our, in our poor Catholic Church, falling to pieces with a scandalous Pope like we have, Pope Francis, who was no less scandalous than Pope Paul VI, John Paul II. They were all the same, promoting the Masonic ideas. And it's a tragedy because it's leading many souls to hell. These are bad popes, and we've got to pray for their conversion. But we must persevere in the good work and pray for, pray for fellow Catholics to persevere because many fall to the left, many are falling to the right. We've got to be faithful to the Catholic truth and hold the line of Archbishop Lefebvre because it wasn't his line we're holding, it's just the line of all of Catholic tradition and all the popes. That's it. That's all we want to do and proclaim and adore Christ the King. And very soon, very soon here on the altar, he comes down. He reenacts his sacrifice. And you're going to receive our Lord. And you're going, to, you're going to hold the same Christ, the King, who rose from the dead, who was crucified on the cross. The living, glorified flesh of our Lord, you're going to consume this living fire. So he wants to inflame us with his divine love. So pray to St. Mary Magdalene. Pray to her to have that great desire and the great love of our Lord. The, many of the saints say, she fell low, yes, but she bounced higher by repentance, contrition. And she surpassed many who were lukewarm. And that's why Christ says he, it's, it's by love that she surpassed many, many other saints. So let's learn from St. Mary Magdalene to really love our Lord and ask the Virgin Mary. She was the first to see Christ risen from the dead. Our poor Blessed Mother, how much she suffered. How much she suffered. She's the queen of martyrs without dying because her heart was so pounded with sorrow she should have died. But God kept her miraculously alive during the Passion, and her great joy this morning, on the first Easter morning, to see her Divine Son. And her mission was just beginning for the Church. She would be the, the mother hand to gather the Apostles, who had all lost the faith. She'd be the mother to gather them all together, and Peter also. Saint Peter, who betrayed our Lord, and he, he never got over it. He always wept when he heard roosters crowing. It reminded him of his betrayal. And she would take care of the first apostles as mother. And St. John took care of her, and she lived in Ephesus. And uh, that house is still there, where, where St. John said Mass with the Blessed Virgin Mary. And then at her, ascent, uh, her assumption into heaven, <clears throat> many of the apostles, they all gathered there. For she was what's called, in, in a greatly devoted from the Apostles themselves, the Dormition of Mary, that she died for three days, as if sleeping. Her soul was separated from the body because she would imitate Christ, who, who for three days would be dead. And after the third day, the angels came and took her body and assumed her body into heaven, and her soul and body were reunited. And that's the same Virgin Mary who... She lives now. The, the, the two bodies we know for sure are in heaven, and possibly St. Joseph, but for sure two are defined by the church. Christ who ascended, Mary who was assumed. And they're in heaven now. And that's the same mother who came in Fatima, that's the same mother who is trying to warn us of these days that we're living through. And, and to Mother Mariana in, in Ecuador, to Mother Mariana in Quito, she, told, she warned us about these days, that we're going to live through another Good Friday, and it's going to be a hurricane. It's going to be a hurricane. Rome will lose the faith and become the seat of the Antichrist. Darkness will envelop the whole earth. The eclipse of the faith in the bishops and the loss of the faith 
and Our Lady of Fatima, the, what she calls the diabolical disorientation, the confusion of the minds, the compromises with Vatican II and the new Mass. And Anne Catherine Emmerich also saw in a vision this new church being built with the help of devils. This is the Novus Ordo Conciliar Church. It's it. And she says the bishops are, she sees the procession of bishops. Some of them are cross-eyed, some of them are all twisted. And it shows the state of their faith and their souls. They've lost the faith. So this is the Good Friday hurricane we're living through now. Where do we go? We go to the to that uh, bomb shelter, the Virgin Mary. It's under her mantle. There's no other safe place. It's there we have to be, close to her, and asking her to give us the strong faith to persevere and to uh, save our soul and the souls of others in this massive storm. So happy Easter to all of you on this great day. And let's proclaim uh, this, this world has become so Judaic, Judaic, so atheist that the world to the world, it's just another day. This morning on the plane, I said happy Easter to someone. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. It's Easter. Yeah, it's Easter. They remember the Super Bowl Sunday, but Easter Sunday? Our dear Lord, so forgotten, so blasphemed, so mocked. It's awful. And this past week was Holy Week. All public schools were open, all colleges. They didn't have the week off. They didn't even have Good Friday off. We have become so Jewish, so perfidious as a nation. So let's not mock God by, by saying, God bless America. God have mercy on America. God have mercy on us. Because we are provoking him to such a wrath that's never been... St. Pope Pius XII said, Mankind must prepare for such suffering the world has never seen yet. And you just you read the descriptions of World War One and World War Two. It was incredible suffering. What are we in for? I don't know. But in the meantime, grow in the love of God. Keep the faith. Spread the faith. Seek the salvation of your family, souls, your neighbors, souls, those you work with. You've got to seek the the salvation of souls. And it's true. Most people can care less. We all encounter this. But there are some good souls still thirsty. They're still out there. That's why Christ doesn't punish yet, because there's still souls that have yet to come to, into the sheepfold. And then we must bring in, by prayer, by penance, and mirac passing out miraculous medals, pass out the scapular, pass out little cards of information or holy cards. And now you've got quite an advantage. You can pass out websites that people can find about the fight for Catholic tradition, the true catechism, the true, to true mass, the true sacraments, and where to find them on internet. You can make this available and use these means to reach souls. The devil uses it for his purpose. We have to use these highways of Rome of the modern days, so to speak, to reach souls. So I encourage you to do that. And you can even find Bishop Sheen's sermons now. You can find Bishop Sheen's sermons. They, they would have been lost. So, so there's so much available now. And we got to really have that love for souls. All of us. Not just the priests who are missionaries, but all, all of us. You all bump elbows with people. You all work in public places. You all go shopping in public places. You bump into people all the time and uh, go out of your way to <coughs> seek their salvation. Obviously, there's different ways. You can come down with a hammer and condemn them to hell and preach fire and brimstone. That might convert some, but probably not many. The usual way is the way of St. Francis de Sales, who says uh, you, you attract more flies with one drop of honey than a thousand gallons of vinegar. And that is the way most people are. They respond to kindness, they respond to, to uh, you know, a very 
courteous approach, obviously. And we see this touch in our Lord. We see this touch in our Lord when He says to St. Mary Magdalene, Go tell my brethren that I will come to them. Who's He talking about? He's talking about the apostles. Christ is God. And He's calling them my brethren. And what He means is we are truly brothers of Christ in the sense, as He told St. Mary Magdalene, I have not yet ascended to my God and your God, to my Father and your Father. God is God the Father is Father of Christ by nature, because He's the Son of God by nature. We have become children of God by grace, by adoptive sonship, that is, by sanctifying grace. And we become truly members of the family of the Blessed Trinity. This is called the mystical body of Christ. This is called the mystical body. This is the, the great family we are meant to live in. I am the vine, you are the branches. And this is the Holy Roman Catholic Church, the mystical body of Christ. This is where we want to belong. No other place. We don't want to belong to that dead tree called the Vatican II Church. We don't want it. And it's already been condemned by a whole long list of popes who condemn the errors of Vatican II. We want to stay in that living vine where Christ is the vine and we are united to Him as branches and the Blessed Mother. He is the head of the Catholic Church. Mary is the neck and we, are, we make up members of His mystical body. This is the Catholic teaching. This is what our Lord wants. So be these living branches of the church and bear good fruits. And when you suffer, know that it's the Father who's... My Father is a farmer, Christ said. Know that He's pruning you. and he's, he, he's, he, When He strikes, He heals. When He sends us crosses and tears and thorns, He's sanctifying us to bear more fruits. The great fruits of charity, patience, humility, love of God. And the love of God is the queen of all of them. And a stronger faith to bear good fruit, which I wish you all, through the most sacred heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, and the joys of this beautiful Paschal Tide, 2017. O Mary, conceived without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary, conceived without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary, conceived without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to thee. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Amen.